is by saying, oh, it hurts. Maybe I should throw the rock back. And you throw the rock back at where it came from. That's a react. Or you feel, oh, I'm a, um, I'm a bad person. All these bad things happen to me all the time. And so you start feeling, you get down on yourself. I'm a loser. All these bad things happen to me all the time. And you get more stressed. That's not good stress management principle. So stress management principle goes like this. Life throws rocks at me and it hurts. You take the rock and you toss it in the air a few times. You know that the rock is the thing that happened that then the, the negative emotion resulted from the thing that happened. Whatever the thing is. Someone did something, said something, or whatever it is. And you toss the rock in the air a few times. Now there's, as soon as you do that, that's detachment. It's a mode of goodness space. You consider, what are my options? What's the best way to respond to this rock that just hit me and it hurts? And there's so many things that once you're in that space, you may not have a clear idea of what to do, but you're in a mode of goodness space. And so rather than ignorance and passion operating, the mode of goodness is operating, your, your receiver is on. The super soul receiver is on to receive some signal from Krishna. What, what is the right thing for me to do? And it may be directly to the rock and the hurt, or it may be something else. I'll, I'll give a practical example. <clears throat> some time ago, um, I was with a, a young couple, and the wife... I didn't know this until they shared it, but the wife had just undergone a miscarriage. Life threw rock at her, and it hurt. So, I've not been through miscarriage, but I know that women that have, it's, it's a lot of, they're carrying a lot of grief. And their husband probably also, at least empathically, is feeling the grief of his wife. So we just did this little exercise. We threw the rock in the air a few times. And in this particular case, just I was inspired to suggest two things. Grieving is natural. And to not just stay stuck in a grieving mode. How about this? Turn your face to Krishna and think... What are some of the gifts that Krishna has given you? I don't, you don't need to say what it is right now. But what are some of the gifts that Krishna has given you? And you take those gifts, you look at those gifts, you say thank you to Krishna, and you give the gift back to Krishna. So they did that. I mean... I was meeting this couple for the first time. So it wasn't like a bond of affection between us. It just somehow went in. And without the details, that helped the mother that had just have a, had a miscarriage get beyond the, the period of grief of the miscarriage and connect again to Krishna and connect again to herself and not just get into the problem side. It didn't take care of that which she couldn't do anything about it anyways. Some things in life, it's outside of, there's nothing you can do about it. I'll give one more example that I, I like to give a lot because it's very meaningful. It's still, we're still on this one slide. There's a very powerful book, little book, 
called Man's Search for Meaning. The author is Viktor Frankl, F-R-A-N-K-L, a Jewish man who was in a Nazi concentration camp and survived. So that was the problem, but he didn't get steeped in the problem because, as he writes in the book, which saved his life and gave him a purpose beyond the concentration camp, was rather than grieving about a situation there's nothing he could do about, he was considering, you know, in, in our ISKCON language, what is Krishna's lesson for me here? But in, in our, uh, in his language, he wanted to take this great misfortune and turn it around into an opportunity where on the other side of, be, because his profession was a psychologist or a therapist of some kind, to be able to help people who are undergoing circumstances of life that are outside of their control that are very painful, how to go beyond the pain of circumstances that are outside of your control. So when he, that's what happened. There's details of how that saved him. There's details in the book. But on the other side, he wrote a book. And then he became a celebrity because he had a lot of realization about overcoming negative emotion by taking shelter of a higher purpose of life. You know, a gift that Krishna had given him and how to use that gift that Krishna had given him in service to Krishna. And Krishna's living entity parts and parcels that were undergoing some negative emotion. Over circumstances, what do you do when you're in a concentration camp? There's nothing you can do. You're a prisoner. And your life could be taken, and there's details described in the book. It's, it's very painful. It's, it's, it's indescribably cruel. But he didn't crumble under that cruelty and the pain. He <laughs> had, had a, so, a purpose awaiting you to be fulfilled, is his words. What man needs is not at all cost, any cost, release from circumstances that are oppressive and outside of your control. Let me out of here. Man doesn't need that. Man needs a purpose, or woman, a person, needs a purpose awaiting for them to be fulfilled. A gift from Krishna, you cultivate it and use that gift from Krishna and you'll find Krishna. And you'll find connection to Krishna, which is the positive emotion beyond the duality program. The expectation of happiness is, let me out of here. No, you're out of here. Now I'm happy. You follow? It's like, here's another example. This is, Haridas Thakur goes into prison. The prisoners go, yay, Sadhu is amongst us. Please give us your benediction. My benediction is you should stay like this. <laughs> ah. <laughs> And his explanation was not that you stay in prison, but stay where your senses are controlled, your mind is controlled, you're praying to God because in a few days you're going to get out of prison and you'll go back to business as usual. So don't go back to business as usual. Stay in this mood of dependence and where your senses are controlled. You don't even have the, the sense gratification opportunity here in prison. So stay in a controlled space. Dependent upon the personality of God, it's stay there. You'll be protected by that staying there condition. Um, in the West, a kind of famous personality was Henry Ford, who this, this is a phrase that he would speak, don't find fault, find a remedy. It's on the same theme. Um, something that 
I'm spending a lot of time on this because it's important. We'll go quickly now with some of the other verses, but I learned this one when I was a teenager. And when I was a teenager, my understanding was this. Any two-bit teenager can tell you what all the problems are. Because that's what teenage energy does. The, the older generation, they've made a big mess of things. But where's that teenager that has a solution to make it better? I want to find that person. So, <clears throat> back to Suniti. She was also breathing very heavily and she did not know the factual remedy for the painful situation. She looked for a solution. She couldn't find one. So what did she do? What was her next stop? She wants to give to her son what she has. She is a affectionate, qualified supermom. Not finding any remedy, she said to her son. This is a response item. Take shelter of higher principles. She does it, and she's passing that on. So in this case, it's her son, but we all have relationships. We have friends. We have people that are going through stuff, and they come to us saying, whoa, life just hit me, and it hurts. So what do you do to be a friend? 